so we've changed the team to include more teachers so that we can support schools properly in using the materials. Um, I'm, I'm assuming, Rose, you know the project a bit, but for Graham, I'm just going to explain one uh, really short explanation about how open schooling is defined by the uh, European uh, Commission and all the schools involved. Um, but before that, because we're focusing on uh, experts and parent involvement, uh, I wanted to ask if you've had an experience as an expert visiting another place. Have you been an expert as a guest somewhere? Well, that's a really interesting question. I think I don't know that I was invited back to my old high school and I can't remember I can't remember if I did it. I don't think I did, you know. Um, so that's not good is it um I'm trying to think I've not I've I've, I've not in not in the in a similar context you know to um schools but I know um my uh kids school um I have a 13 year old who her high school has asked for parents to get involved with careers fairs okay so you've done yeah, that so, yeah I haven't volunteered for that um, because I thought they had they'd have the teacher part covered. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, I know lots no, of. It's other interesting people. to think from that perspective because when we're asking people, there's a, a different kind of. We think it's easy for them to say yes, but it's kind of there's all these considerations. But what about you, Graham? Have you? Um, well, would outreach to primary schools count? Just going into primary schools, it's just that's yeah. something that's. Um, yeah. Well, it's something we've started again, actually. I'm not involved in this time, but it, it is something that we have done. I have also ran um, careers events at the school where we had experts coming in. Obviously, I wasn't the expert there, but we did have people from the university and sort of friends of par um, parents or parents coming into yeah. school to deliver to year nines. And uh, it's always we've learned that it's kind of a, it's an idea that everyone knows about but there are yeah. some barriers yeah for people to say yes and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. we need to help them uh, I think engagement is it's obviously uh, having people coming in as experts hmm. it's basically how good they are at getting the kids engaged yeah. as well because it's not as easy just standing up and they might have a really interesting job but if they don't capture the kids in that half an hour, 40 minutes, yeah. it's, it's so, just... So hopefully time. we've actually got... We've addressed that with some of the resources in Make It Open, um, actual templates as well as uh, links. Um, so, and I'm just going to move on. Lucy, we're going to talk to you maybe a bit later. Um, just to um, say... Can you hear me, Daniel, now? Yes, yes, we can. You can. Okay, yes, that's good. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, so Make It Open is a three year international project. Um, there are now 10 countries involved. UK is one of the core partners. We've led on all the kind of uh, user journey because we are also a design uh, studio. So the kind of service design of how to engage with uh, people and how to disseminate the materials. Uh, but it's been fascinating seeing the culture of the, the education cultures in all these other countries. And one of the issues has been language. So you'll see that the language we use is slightly different. Like we'll use the term lesson scenario and not lesson plan or uh, things that are, but um, I guess the, the key is that the support for open schooling is because of the benefits it brings. And um, these are things that you recognize, but um, we're really focused on this idea of purposeful collaborations between schools and their wider community. And the, this project is uh, like six or seven others uh, using science learning as a way of engaging. And in our case, it's also maker education. And it's very much about investing in the next generation to feel part of uh, wherever they are and to be able to use their creativity for real world issues. Uh, so in terms of the community involvement, it's really down to um, the school becoming part of the of their community. And how do you do that? Who are the people, who are the organizations and how do you 
uh, create that model for young people? Uh, and how do they also learn to lead things, which are, is the things that we're hearing that are um, very much at the forefront of the thinking of teachers who want um, young people to lead and be involved. So um, in terms of the open schooling itself, um, the research has kind of blocked out six building blocks, six uh, elements to consider. Some of them are easier to understand, like roles, location, and scheduling. Others are more to do with who is providing the content and when, uh, in terms of which qualities the content has, and also in terms of which components are involved in the program. So uh, an odd visit or an odd expert is great, but it doesn't create purposeful collaborations for longer term. It also doesn't build on a previous thing into the next. And so open schooling is trying to enable these things in a kind of to create a culture of thinking about these things um, as part of planning and delivering. In terms of involving community, these are the areas that are easier to address in terms of who is teaching, bringing other people to into the teaching or in taking students to other locations where they are meeting other people and also in terms of connecting to a real world project that's going on in your neighborhood or online but it's live um, each of the lesson scenarios and we have 16 that we've developed across the uh, four countries uh, two of them were uh, two schools in the UK, um, one in Bury, uh, Derby High, and uh, one in South London, Jubilee, were involved in writing two lesson scenarios each. They're all available, but each of these lesson scenarios um, has links to the STEM subjects and also suggests uh, who to involve and where to try these uh, uh, events or what, how to think about it. So it's kind of a template for uh, easier to uh, to plan. Um, and in this case, we're really focusing on who is involved. And um, just, I know Rose and Lucy, you've already seen this, but Graham, these are the 16 tried and tested scenarios. There's a link to something called the navigator and where you can see the lesson scenarios, the learning units, and even to the level of uh, the activities and materials needed for each one. It can be taken as such and run in the school, or it can be uh, adapted to a shorter period of time. Uh, some schools have taken two lesson scenarios like uh, Zero Waste School and Snacks Around Us and combined lesson units from it. What I thought today would be to just explain that each project has to have a minimum of these four stages, a, a brief research, create and share, but it can be run in a day, in a STEM day, it can be run in a week, and it can be across a half term or a term. In terms of the research, it's quite light. There's a survey at the beginning, before, and there's a survey at the end. Um, just to see, and there's no involvement of uh, the children's work in most of the schools. So it's a, quite a light engagement. We thought to bring a few examples from the lesson scenarios. Um, and Leah's kind of picked uh, a few examples of where different types of involvement of parents. So maybe Leah, you can go through these. Yeah, I'll just talk really briefly. Um, but just some examples of this one with community participation. So thinking about uh, parents' engagement in the learning. So the first one in Healthy Snacks, that one's really about parents at home and engaging them in the house. So you could, that could be through questionnaires, questioning. This one was about um, cooking with parents in the house. So taking that learning home and taking it back into the classroom. And the second one, is more of a hands-on and um, getting parents involved in the building and creating aspect of a project. Um, so in Seed to Compost, at the end of the project, children developed and designed their own compost, composter for the school, and then they um, bring in parents in for that. 
to help with the building elements. So just that volunteer aspect of yeah. trying to engage. And one of the schools, the they added the wormery. So they were developing both of these for their garden. Um, in Healthy Snack, we also have, that's one lesson unit where they're involving families, but it's also about mapping where, how much food travels and how it's communicated. Um, I need to move on, don't I? So um, yeah. Okay, so this um, next one is examples of, I guess, experts within your your wider network of the school, but also thinking about um, experts, your community as experts. So parents and carers and how you don't always have to think outside the box and reach out to organizations. In fact, you might have police officers, medical uh, people within the medical field who are parents and also can share that knowledge. Um, so in this first one, it was a police officer um, and the second, with a medical expert coming in. So it's also trying to reach your own network um, and thinking about the skills they might have to offer. Um, so yeah, you don't always have to think about experts as like people who are out of reach, but experts are all around us. So just trying to reach your own network through, I don't know what means you use of communicating with parents, but asking parents to come in and share their knowledge and volunteer. Um, and then this final one, I guess, is a bit more of, experts and organizations who maybe are a bit further to reach, um, but you don't always have to think of that as a physical visit. It could be reaching larger organizations and asking for you know, a virtual, a virtual talk from them within the classroom. So it doesn't always have to be sort of a visit, a virtual visit to a place. Um, but yeah, trying to think of organizations are happy to help um, and there are lots of organizations who work with schools. Um, so yeah, it's trying so, to think. Yeah, these, these two lesson scenarios are really, uh, have got um, strong physics aspects to them. Um, other other uh, lesson scenarios have more chemistry or more uh, biology or life sciences. But in these case, um, they, these are, about bringing in engineers or even visiting um, these locations. Um, a science museum can be replaced with another venue. So you can take the lesson scenario, use it, but then instead of visit a science museum, visit a local uh, university that has a science center or something like that. So they, these are kind of, we, what we're saying is that these are templates. You can run them as such directly, but they're also uh, good as a uh, planning tool. And finally, I guess, Leah, you were talking about that actually every scenario. Yeah, so every scenario, the, the fourth phase, um, the share aspect, and this, I guess, is a really key part of involving the community. Um, so this is where you engaging with parents, sharing and celebrating the project that you've done. So this is, I guess, one of the key parts of where you might get the community involved. Um, and it doesn't have to be, again, like contact based. It could be through your local media, a newspaper article, some form of sharing as well. Um, so, yeah, I think just thinking through those different phases and actually parents the community could be involved in in all of those in different yeah. ways. So um, what we've done is also in we do have some templates of letters of how uh, to start the to make it easier to write to a local company or to a parent. But in terms of identifying potential partners, I guess you've all thought about all of these, but uh, it, we thought to also just really identify them in terms of. Um, thinking from nearest to furthest, and also in terms of uh, not forgetting to use, uh, just even sometimes uh, some schools are uh, asking the, the pupils to have a look at social media and what's going on in the neighborhood and see and identify, be part of the planning of the, of the lessons. Uh, we've saw that with the illicit drugs, actually the whole lessons and each of the lessons and uh, uh, units was developed with children who then delivered it to their peers. Um, and that was in Derby High and they were 
using all kinds of uh, connections they had in the community to get a nurse or a policeman. Um, also, there are groups, interest groups, always around hobbyists or learning groups. Um, in fixed bits, we often try to find a group of people who are willing to talk to students and become the kind of uh, insight providers. They become actually they're part of the teaching side. Um, and um, of course, large businesses are more aware now and often are looking to support local initiatives. So sometimes it's through a parent or a contact, but sometimes it's also through direct uh, contact to a business. I'm sure you've tried that, but um, it's become more interesting for them to be involved locally, I think. And we were speaking to uh, some of our advisors, uh, expert advisors, and we picked on some of the things they've said. Um, Lucy O'Rourke runs the Helen Hamlin Trust uh, research and, and works with a lot of schools. And she was really um, talking very clearly that it, there are kind of explaining that these are practical activities and focusing on the skills that they can uh, bring and they use a format called bring a parent to school day so the reverse of bring a child to work day um, and they've done a lot of these kind of uh, project-based learning and parallel to that I think Wajid Riaz who's uh, he's taught uh, at Sarah Bonnell school in London but also he has uh, something independent called tech block he, he was talking a lot about this importance of helping parents understand that although this sounds like a fun project, it's very much aligned and supporting this, this the students' uh, kind of great focus because it is delivering those subjects in a way that they will care about them. Um, so helping parents understand the benefits of the project while explaining to them what the project is and uh, I, I was going to ask if you've involved uh, community and maybe Lucy, you, you have any thoughts about involving community? Uh, yes, definitely. It all sounds great, Daniel, by the way. It's nice to be reminded of it all. Um, we've, we've looked at how to co-produce and co-plan with community. So whilst it's not specifically on those projects, we do have um, or try to have half termly meetings with some community partners. And we looked at them, we looked with them at what the issues were in the area, maybe what we could work on together. So whilst it wasn't a science project or a scenario as you're describing, it was something that came from joint discussions and listening. And then we thought, well, as a school, what can we bring to that? And we decided what was the to- format? What was the format of the co-planning? Um, we had a meeting where we asked sort of some big questions about the community in the school and, and and was the um, meeting in the school or outside or online the, meet, the meeting was in the school um and we had probably about 20 community partners in the first one and they just got all they they got really fired up about looking at the contacts they had between them the skills they had between them and that kind of thing and like i said we asked them some big questions which they responded to in groups and then we drew together what were the key themes and, and for us it was about community cohesion or lack of um, so we decided we'd co-produce and co-plan a day for the community where they could learn about each other's cultures and things um, so that was going to be last July and we managed to get 40 40 um, representatives from the community to come and help us lead workshops in the day. So they brought their expertise into school then. Um, but would you believe the hot, hot weather um, made, meant that we had to postpone it for this year? Yeah, the weather is, uh, yeah, you can't believe it today in the last few days, can you? I don't know, yeah. So, so that's, that's, quite on, a, that's quite a large scale involvement. Yeah. Yeah. What about in your school, Graham? How do you involve? I think it, it is something that went awry with COVID and something, obviously, getting involved in this, it will be hopefully to kick, re, restart and kickstart things. We did have um, strong community links with 
we ran, I can't remember what competition it was, but we partnered up with um, a local um, chemical firm and they had people who would come in once a week on a lunchtime and help the kids prepare for this project. As I've said, we had, we used to run careers every year for year nine and we had really good uptake on that in terms of um, links within the community. And it would be just about re-establishing those and getting emails out and just, just getting people in and getting them in front of the kids. And have you had any people into lessons? So parents, um, experts? Yeah, yeah. So we that's that's how we did it. We had a sort of week. It was it was always the week before the first October half term. Okay. And we filled sort of sessions up as and when and as we could. And if we could, we'd we'd get as many sessions out of the people coming in. So we try and bring them in so they could deliver to at least two two different classes. But it was successful. But as I said, with COVID, it it's kind of went awry. Yeah. And it's one of them that kind of needs a kind of some impetus again to to get it going. And what about a actual project like um, a garden or a new? So that's bathroom? so it, it previously, as I said, I, I can't quite remember what the competition was, but it was you had to develop a. It was it was about um, green energy, and it was relying upon the expertise of the these sort of uh, mm. scientists coming in and helping and basically just encouraging the kids, but letting them kids see the, the possible pathways that they could they, they could take in uh, sort of with, with STEAM. And maybe this could be useful in terms of reigniting this type of involvement. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What about you, Rose, in the example of community involvement that yeah, I just expand on what Lucy said, really, because um, I know you mentioned before about sort of getting that long term partnership going. And I think that's what I'm starting to um, sort of build now because, um, you know, I only started at Failing a couple of years ago. Um, but in the last couple of years, we've we've built partnerships quite locally. So we have a lot of primary schools that we work with who mm -hmm. are really keen to continue to work with us so um we worked alongside the royal society last year um to start um sort of ex expand and build in our garden that we've got at school and that includes parents coming in yeah so um we had um so we got given you know some some money to get some equipment and um we had to do the research the pupils who were involved we did um a sort of showcase event where um very kindly the local community um sort of allowed us to go and use their space so the church allowed us to use Outside, their yeah. um, space which was great um and we also have um a museum so touchstones um, and they're running um a project that's sort of a national project which is urban natures so that sort of fed in with what the work so the nice thing about um sort of in the community partners that are sort of built up it's sort of primaries that are local and then sort of local the museum and then you know we've also got national projects going on and it all sort of interlinks with the theme of environment really um that sort of overriding um everything and looking at biodiversity so um but the good thing about it is that the schools want to maintain that and they want to keep the projects going and with the royal society we can extend to apply for um some more money um for this year to extend the project um I guess that leads very much to the thing that we was mentioned at the beginning and also where you must be doing a lot of, which is uh, how do you support the people that you're working with? How do you yeah. support those experts to actually be able to engage well? Yeah, with... the thing I like about those is very much, um, particularly with touchstones, it's a very much a two-way process. So I've been asked at all stages, you know, what can what would I benefit from? What would the pupils benefit from? So they want to find experts for us. So, you know, um, I'm looking at um looking at moss at the moment and I, I found a moss expert on online um who very kindly agreed to talk to me on Monday. Um and you know if I can get some C P D in, you know, touchstones have said that, you know, funding wise they they would help with maybe, that. Maybe they're up for the biodiversity lesson scenario as well. 
well this is it I'm thinking you know watch this space watch this space <laughs> um, so we were talking to Dr. Lynn Bianchi, who's also one of the expert advisors on Make It Open. Um, we're very lucky with the group that has agreed to uh, guide us and mentor. Uh, she was talking about actual tools that they use in the Great Science Chair and with STEM ambassadors. So I'm sure you've heard from her, but just in case not, I thought to bring this we thought to mention this resource, the STEM visitors in primary schools and they talk a lot about, you know, helping the experts to ask questions rather than just immediately talk about themselves and their career. And so how to engage through questions, you know, things that uh, seem really obvious to people who are teaching. But if you're coming in, you are you might be nervous as an expert coming into this environment. Um, in Make It Open, there are uh, the guide packs and inside uh, pack three. Uh, these are available from our website, but um, in pack three, there's actually a series of templates to be used for a local organization or for a parent. Um, so these can be used by teachers um, to uh, hack and just adapt to whatever needs. Maybe it saves time, maybe it makes it uh, a bit easier to do. Um, so this is on our website. Um, I, it, uh, Leah will pop the link in the chat. Um, and if you have any questions about any of what has come up, and uh, uh, Graham, if you think this is something St. Monica would like to take part in in one of the lesson scenarios, or to take the structure and uh, describe something you're already doing and join, um, just let us know. And then we'll, it's uh, quite easy to activate. Um, there is a bursary that we're uh, the project is offering of two hundred and fifty pounds for schools who are joining uh, the research project. So you need to let us know if you're interested in that as well. And well, because I'm we're very close to the Derby because you mentioned the Derby High School. Yeah, so actually, a colleague went to work there as an assistant head over the summer. So what I will do. I'll communicate with him and just ask, obviously, what what have they got going? How did they get it going? And I'll get, just get some more. Yeah. Just just but, to say, so they developed a zero waste school and illicit yeah. drugs. These are the two. Um, yeah. but the other the other fourteen are also uh, depends on what themes you want to explore this yeah. year or already happening. Um, but. Just to say that the involvement of schools now in this rollout session as uh, stage is much lighter. They were heavily involved because they were writing and they were actually they're even they're credited on the navigator. So the commitment right now is much, much lighter in terms of research. It's just a survey before and a survey after. It's not even uh, asking for parent permission unless you're a school that agrees to be a, a research champion. Um, and that's something, I guess, um, we'd like to talk to you, Rose, when uh, you start. 